Welcome back to the home lab and looking smart again today because I've been out teaching mathematics. So I've got a really interesting build to show you today. What we're going to look at is a Leibniz wheel and how it can be used to make a mechanical calculator. But before we start, I just want to say a huge thank you again to all of you for supporting this channel and PCB Way for sponsoring me and always encouraging me to make more interesting content for you. Um, as you know, they do uh, printed circuit boards and there's no need for one on this project yet, but there might be in the future. But they also do CNC machining and 3D printing. And if there was ever a project that could have done with that, it was this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what a Leibniz wheel is, how it can be used to make a mechanical calculator, and how I went about building my version. Recently I've been somewhat obsessed by mechanical calculators, and I'll be doing a video on the Sumlock mechanical calculator soon. But I got interested in a really old mechanical calculator that used a stepped wheel as part of its calculating mechanism that was invented by Gottfried Leibniz in about 1670. And he used his stepped gear wheel to create a real true working calculator as far back as about 1690. So I set a little challenge to myself to see if I could build a Leibniz stepped wheel and then develop a calculator around it from scrap parts I had lying around in the workshop. Well, that turned out to be a much, much harder project than I thought it would be, and it took me ages. But I'm quite pleased with the, the outcome, and it does actually work. And it's worth saying that if you build something from scratch, literally from scratch with your hands, you end up with a really good understanding of how it all works. So the challenge I set myself was to see if I could build a working Leibniz wheel driven mechanical calculator just from scrap materials I had around. I had an old bit of drain pipe and also some blue PVC foam that I took out of the school skip. The first thing I had to build was the actual Leibniz wheel itself. I thought actually I'd try a design of my own in that instead of the teeth protruding radially from a solid cylinder, I'd make a hollow rotor consisting only of gear teeth. This turned out to be much harder to build than I first thought. To do this, I took a section of drain pipe, marked the gear teeth onto it, and then went out into the garden to cut it out by hand with a hacksaw blade. It was not an easy task, and in the end, it also produced a worrying amount of plastic waste, but I did end up with a reasonably good and usable Leibniz gear. I had already, with a Stanley knife, cut two end caps from the blue PVC foam board to allow me to mount the Leibniz wheel on an axle, and these were fitted tightly into each end of the drain pipe. It was then time to cut out the gears from the PVC foam board, again by hand with a Stanley knife. This proved to be quite a complex and lengthy process, but I got there in the end trying a range of tooth profiles. There were plenty of holes to drill too, and a technique I find works quite well, if you're careful, is to use the suction of a vacuum cleaner to serve the double purpose of holding the workpiece whilst you drill, as well as collecting all of the annoying plastic swarf. With 6mm wooden doweling acting as a shaft for the gears, it was then back into the garden to cut out some thin perspex strips with the bandsaw. I took these into the kitchen to bend them into right angles to support the gear shafts, using a small blowtorch and a block of wood to form the right angles. The remaining drain pipe was used to cut out the two number wheels, and I used my fantastic brother labeler to print the digits for both number wheels and the Leibniz wheel gear teeth. Perspex again seemed to make for a great base for the project, which I had to buy in this case. So with multiple holes drilled, 
and a handful of five millimeter bolts, it was time to put it all together on an A3 base and adjust all the positions of the axle brackets so the gears meshed correctly and didn't catch too often. With a bit of tinkering, it all worked. Now it's worth saying at this stage that one realizes just how important gear alignment, tooth profile, and especially a centered hole in the gears are. Mine were a bit all over the place, and this was really a lesson in, if you actually build it yourself from scratch, you not only understand the working of the system better, but you become aware of all the pitfalls that can catch you out when you build this type of design. Then to my favorite bit, with it all bolted together, removing the plastic protective covering and finally seeing my finished product in all its glory. So let's have a quick talk through what I've built and then we'll get it to do some maths and calculations. So here's the uh, Leibniz wheel itself. And as you've seen a bit earlier on when I was building it, it consists of a drum with nine gear teeth on it. And those gear teeth are all different lengths. The way I've built it is with nine, then eight, then seven, then six going around. And the longest of the gear teeth is number one. That meshes with a counting gear here with 10 teeth. So the idea is if you slide this counting gear to different places, it will mesh with different numbers of teeth. So currently it's lined up with the four and that means there's four teeth here. So if I turn the wheel, the counting gear will turn one, two, three and four teeth further on. So I've entered four into the system. If I wanted to enter eight, I'd slide it to here. And as I turned the drum, I would add or move on eight teeth. So I would put eight into the system. So you've got the basic understanding here of the uh, Leibniz gear and the counting wheel. So what we then need to do is work out how many times it's been rotated. In other words, how many teeth it's been turned through. So we have some counting wheels and they will only count up to nine, a single wheel. So we then need a set of gears and a second counting wheel that will do the carry and go 10, 11, 12, 13, etc. So let's look now at the counting uh, drums. So they're here and they're set against this marker to zero and zero. So this is the units or the ones and that's the tens. And we'll start putting some numbers into this machine. So we'll add four to zero. In other words, we'll enter four. So I've got the counting wheel gear lined up here with four on the Leibniz drum. So all I do is turn and in goes the number four. So if I turn again, what I'm going to do is add another four into this system. And that's all fine. And then it becomes a bit more problematic because if we add another four, we need to get to 12. So I've got a system here where we can carry forward the 10 and have one and two showing on the counting drums. So we're still lined up with four on the uh, Leibniz wheel. So let's see what happens if we add four to eight. So there's the four. These gears are now turning. And it's not quite lined up, but it will do. So a whole rotation every time of the Leibniz drum. And here we have the answer, 12. So three fours or four plus four plus four is 12. Let's have a quick look at the carry mechanism. So on the units drum, I've got a gear here with just one tooth on it. And that tooth is going to engage when it's been through a full rotation. So seven, eight, nine, and then it needs to carry. So that tooth will turn this gear through one position, directly connected to that one, one position, and therefore will turn the tens counter drum through one tooth and turning that from a zero to a one. So we're on zero eight at the moment. So let's feed in another four. So there's our nine, 10 engaging and 11, 12. So we've managed to add four plus four plus four or 
by rotating the drum always a whole turn for each number entry three times four. Now that we've seen how entering individual digits into the calculator with whole turns of the Leibniz gear can be used to multiply four by three, which is the same mathematically as entering four plus four plus four, we'll now look at a slightly more difficult calculation. For example, to add eight plus four, we could position the counting wheel over the eight on the Leibniz wheel, rotate once to enter the eight, and then move it to position four and enter four with a full rotation. But things can be simplified by adding six twos or adding three fours as we did earlier. Subtraction can be done in a number of ways. For example, if we wish to do 23 minus 12, we could enter 23 on the output drums and then subtract 12 from this by moving the counting wheel to the sixth tooth position on the Leibniz wheel and rotating it twice backwards to remove 12 from 23. Getting a little bit more complicated, you could of course do a subtraction by using nine's complement, where the complementary number is the digit you're working with subtracted from nine. For example, nine becomes zero, eight becomes one, etc. And once you use the nines complement method, what you're actually doing is adding numbers rather than subtracting them. For example, to subtract five from eight, you add the nines complement of five, which is four to eight, yielding 12. The carry is discarded, leaving two. As there was a carry, one is added to the last digit, making it three, which is indeed the answer we expected. Whilst that all sounds a little bit complicated, nine's complement was used a lot to allow addition to be used with mechanical calculators when it was subtraction of numbers that was required. I sense this method has been rather lost in time. So finally, let's look at how you do dividing. To divide 19 by three, for example, set up 19 on the output number drums and with the counter wheel set at three on the Leibniz gear, wind whole turns backwards, counting them until you reach a number less than three. And the number of turns will be how many threes go into 19, the quotient, with what's left on the number drums being the remainder. In this case, six whole rotations with a remainder of one. So I hope you've got a good understanding now of how a Leibniz mechanical calculator works. And the amazing thing is uh, calculators based on this system uh, were being used right up until the 1960s along with um, slide rules and things like that until the advent of cheap electronic calculators. So in the case of the uh, Leibniz calculator, that's three centuries, which is an incredible amount of time. Though in fact, it's about a hundred times less than the abacus. So I do hope you enjoyed that video on the Leibniz mechanical calculator and seeing how I went about building one. I know now that if I was going to build another one, uh, I would, of course, uh, machine the parts and use 3D printing. But I've got a good understanding of how it works and the layout that I'd use. Do stay to the end of the video as well, because at the end of all of my videos, I add a few extra bits that I haven't cut into the video that you've seen. And right at the end, I always put in a few links to other videos of mine that might interest you. Anyway, I'm bound to be doing another project before long. So do please. Join me then.